Welcome back YouTube family to our channel. Thank you so much for coming back week after week to learn and grow with me. Um, this time we're going to be exploring the area of zoology and I'm so happy that you guys are enjoying, everyone is enjoying this series where we are exploring each area of the Montessori curriculum, learning about the different elements and learning how we can develop and build these areas and uh, create these areas in our schools and homes, uh, learning about some challenges and how to overcome them. Your feedback, your comments have been amazing. Thank you for that. And uh, I will be creating the videos that you are asking for as well. Zoology is such an exciting area of the curriculum. And the most beautiful part is that you actually can create this area in your school or home without spending too much money. There isn't really a lot that you have to buy. Most of it are things that you can make by yourself. And we have covered some of the materials in presentations before. Uh, you can check out our uh, playlist, which is the material spotlight. And we've covered many presentations from the zoology area that you can watch. We also teach you in that how to give you, we give you some guidance on how to make the materials, um, some of them which we'll be talking about today. Zoology is the study of animals. And this is one area of the Montessori culture curriculum. In the coming months, we will go through botany, we'll go through geography, and we'll go through history as well. We start with uh, zoology. And as you know, children, they are fascinated with the animal world. And they love to learn about different animals and different creatures. So there's a lot of fun and exciting stuff you can do here. Some of the things that we have here are models of animals. Now you can use any animals that you have access to. They could be animals that are native to your country. They could be from different countries. They could be larger ones. They could be smaller ones. There is no real specific size or you don't really have to adhere to anything. One thing you must keep in mind with your um, models of animals is that they should be realistic looking. There are many times I've gone to shops and I've seen a purple giraffe or the giraffe will be tiny in comparison to the bird which is jumbo please keep those things in mind we're trying to give children a very realistic appearance in place of actually seeing the animal we want to give them a very real experience so choose wisely even if they are a little bit more expensive it's better to buy a good quality animal and uh, i am assuring you your child will use it in multiples of ways for many, many years. They enjoy exploring with this material. Apart from the models, we also have pictures of animals. Again, they can be uh, animals of your choice and uh, you can print them out and you can have word tags so that the children can explore and they learn how to read and write through using these materials. We have covered some presentations that, so that you can learn how we use this material we go on from learning about just general animals into learning about animal families such as reptiles, mammals, um, birds and amphibians and so on. And uh, we learn how to, the characteristics of these animals. Then we get into more specifics where we are learning about, uh, you know, a very specific group of birds, maybe birds that cannot fly flightless birds or birds of prey or animals, mammals that are rodents. It's up to you to see what your child is interested in and follow that interest. From there, we go on to learning about the parts of the body of the animals. Uh, we learn about that with puzzles to start with. And then from puzzles, we go into the terminology cards, learning through pictures. Remember that whatever you're trying to teach, you want to have a concrete form of it first. Learning for children will always start at concrete and then move towards abstract, which is pictures and words. After learning about the um, parts of the body of animals, we finally uh, end zoology with life cycles, learning about the different life cycles of animals. 
Now there are no specifics here that you've got to teach this particular life cycle or this particular animal's body parts. It just depends on your child's interest or what you have available, all right? What you're able to make. So don't let it stress you out too much. Like I said, it's important to give children concrete experiences. So where possible, try and get a model for them to have a look at the body parts or have a look at the life cycle. There are a lot of you know, uh, plastic things available that depict these creatures and their life cycles and their body parts for the children, uh, models that they can look at. Um, if you can show them short videos of the animals in their actual habitat, nothing like that to give them a real understanding before you go to the pictures. When we talk about giving children real experiences, that also means having a pet, okay? Now I know it's not possible to, you know, always have pets in school or at home, but there are small ways to do it. You can get birds, you can get uh, turtles, you can get fish at home, you could get guinea pigs, you could get rabbits. There are so many ways. Even just that one pet for the child to learn how to take care of the pet, it's a really, really important factor of a Montessori education. To Maria Montessori, it was important for children to understand that we are all interdependent on each other. As a human being, as man, so-called, that does not make me the center of the universe. The universe. It does not make me the important, the most important creature on this planet. But we all need each other. Just like, you know, I need animals and plants, they need me as well. So that we are one harmonious circle. She always had this in her mind that children should under this, understand this interdependence from a very young age so that it builds a sense of peace in them. When they look after animals, it also builds up this sense of responsibility. It teaches them how to nurture. It teaches them how to care. It builds a lot of brilliant skills in children. Cultural presentations, zoology presentations are very different from the way we present the other materials. There's a lot of open room here for the teacher to take things deeper with the child. We have a lot of conversation that we are exchanging with each other. When we pick up a certain picture and we are talking about it, we don't just sit there and we say, this is a crocodile, this is what it eats, this is where it lives. We have a discussion. So there's a lot of language skills and conversation skills being developed for the child. They're, they get curious and they ask us questions, but why? Why does you know this animal live in this habitat? Why does it have this kind of a skin? And that gives us the opportunity to you know further deepen their curiosity and you know answer their questions and sometimes you don't always have the answer that's fine we're not superhuman we can tell them you know what that's a great question i don't have the answer right now but i'm going to find out maybe you can also go home and do some research let's exchange notes tomorrow so it becomes this learning process for both of you but that means that on the part of the teacher You've got to be the kind of person who nurtures curiosity. Create this space where it's safe for children to ask questions and want to learn more. And when you see that they're interested in something in particular, take that knowledge deeper. So, you know, it looks like you're really interested in crocodiles. Should we explore this a little deeper? I'm going to get a book and we're going to read a story about crocodiles. Let's watch this video. So explore and take them further and deeper into what interests them. In this area, we can develop a lot of skills that otherwise can be challenging for us in other areas. For example, writing. Some children just do not like to write when they're in the language area. When we tell them, can you copy these words? Can you write down a sentence? They just don't want to. But we can give them a picture of the parts of a bird. And they've enjoyed learning about this. And then we tell them, can you label? the parts of the bird and draw arrows and now they don't mind writing now it doesn't seem like something so boring or so difficult they're enjoying it they can make little booklets color and make a little booklet labeling the different species of animals it's on you as the teacher to get creative and see how can I incorporate some math in here how can I incorporate some language in here 
this is an area that's very very exciting for our children and we can make it richer for them if we get a little bit creative similar to practical life this area is also changing a lot of the time we may choose a certain number of model animals at the beginning of the year and then after a month we change them this month i'm doing wild animals next month i will change my animals and i will put um, you know farm animals or animals from the rainforest so it's constantly evolving this area based on what the children are interested in i may decide to create new materials to enhance that to complement what their interests are. Be prepared to have a lot of uh, extensions and variations for the child, lots of art and craft activities that connect with what you're learning, um, lots of activity sheets over here you can have, not worksheets where they're just writing and writing, but you can have counting sheets, um, you can have writing, you know, uh, uh, naming the animals and things like that. There's a lot of ways that you can extend and vary the lessons that we learn in zoology. I really want you all to uh, think deeply about taking children's knowledge further and further in this area. There is so much you can do, so do not limit yourself. The world is just open. Don't hold the child back if you see they're interested. Keep following them and take them as far as they can go. Zoology is fun and setting up this area allows you to have a lot of creativity and fun as well. So enjoy it. Uh, share feedback with me in the comments about how your child is responding to the zoology materials that you are setting up for them. And I will be back soon to talk about botany next. Uh, this will be very similar, but there are so many other activities that you can do with your child to complement the botany activities. So stay tuned, hit the notification, subscribe, like this video please, and until we meet again, have a beautiful day.